Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use source control from the command line to back up your Game Maker Studio 2 projects or Game Maker Studio 1. It actually doesn't matter what you're backing up as long as it's not really large media files. So I've got a Udemy course up on the screen here, and that's because this is my Udemy course. So if you want to learn to use Git more in depth and learn all the advanced features and kind of learn the history of it, check this course out. There'll be a link in the video description with a coupon code to make sure it's $9.99 anytime you click on it just for you guys watching this. So check it out if you're more interested in learning about Git. So the first thing we need to do when using source control is to get Git. So you're going to get this here, just type in G-I-T in any search engine, and this will be probably the first thing that pops up besides ads, and download it. It's free, it is a great tool, and it is the one that is used by pretty much everybody everywhere, and we'll be using it. So go through the install, there's a lot of options, just click the defaults for all of them. Just be sure that when it comes up with an install option of enable right-click uh, control menus, put that in there. You definitely want it. We're not going to be using the GUI version of Git, we're going to be using the command line. And I'll talk about the reason for that when we start using it. So I did GitHub in the project, or in the video earlier, and talking about how to use source control within GameMaker Studio 2. And GitHub and Bitbucket are very similar. There's a button right here called New Repository, and once you make that, it's very similar. You just copy the URL from there, and yeah. So I'm going to be using Bitbucket to show you how to do it on here, because this is what I use, and personally, I think it's best when you're making projects that you don't want to share. GitHub requires $7 a month to do private repositories, which is where your, your code is stored, and Bitbucket does not. So on Bitbucket, we come over here and we press the plus icon. Go to create a new repository, and we'll call this SC test. And we're going to keep this a private repository, we're using Git, and we don't need to worry about any of the advanced settings or anything like that. Go ahead and create the repository. So it comes up here, and over time, Bitbucket changes, and it might look different. But the thing is, you're looking for the HTTPS version of this. There's an SSH, which will look a lot different, but you want the HTTPS, which is basically an entire URL here. But it also contains the commands that we're going to be using. And I'm going to be doing a very quick rundown of the commands, and they'll be what you need to just get working. And if you want to know more, again, check out my Udemy course for a more in-depth uh, coverage of that. So I'm going to copy this whole section right here. And then what I'm going to do is just go to my desktop, and I'm going to right-click Git Bash here, and I'm going to Paste and Enter. So this says Git Clone the repository URL. So basically I am cloning or pulling down my repository onto my machine. And I need to put in my password here. And then I have right here sc-test. This is my git repository. So I'm going to exit out of git bash here. And you might see a completely empty folder. If that's the case, you're going to go to uh, view options, view, show hidden files, folders, and drives. When you click that, then the .git folder will be there. So there it is. You can come in and look at it, but I would not touch this. This is the inner workings of how it knows what to do and keeps the history of everything that goes on. So don't touch anything inside of there. But what we can do is two things. You can either take this whole .git folder and put it in a project that you have already created. Like I could open up this right here, and I could take it and move it into here. And now, when I open up this project, I have, well, I don't even need to open up the project, but everything in this project is now going to be saved in source control. So I've got it right here, but you're not going to see the little icons like you might if you're using the source control from Game Maker Studio 2. So you're not going to be able to know if it's backed up and saved while you're working in here. Instead, what you're going to need to do is right-click in your project, and it has to be in the folder with the .git. So you right-click here, open up a git bash. Now here are the commands that you need to know. The first one is going to be git 
status. And you have to type git before you do all of these commands. That's how you do git commands. So it's going to tell us that we need to track or that we need to add all of the files from here. And this makes sense, right? We have the actual project, then we have all of these folders, which has files inside of them that we haven't saved and added to yet. So to save them, well, to do the entire process, we're going to do this. We're going to say git add period. And this is going to save everything in here. And then I'm going to say git commit dash m. So I'm going to give it a message with parentheses. I'm going to say created a fresh project. Press enter. And then you can see that it adds every single object, view, room, file that we have. And now it's committed. But it's not actually in the cloud yet. It's not saved to Bitbucket. So if I say git push, it then will be. It's going to take everything and put it online after I input my credentials, of course. You may not have to, or it may prompt you to do it every time. It can be a little, little weird depending on your system, and I have multiple repositories that I push to, and so I need to input my credentials most of the time. All right, so there we go. It says that it made a new branch. We're on master, which we are. We're not going to cover branches or anything like that in this video because I'm just going to say this video is just for backing up your project and be able to access it from anywhere in the world and recover in case of an accident, crash, fire, theft, whatever. So now we have everything backed up. So if we go and we look at our Bitbucket and refresh the page, we're going to see our project now inside of here. So there's the message I put in. One minute ago is when it was last introduced. And if we come into this commit, we can actually look and see all of the code that we just put in here. Everything is inside of here. So this is really, really cool because you can actually come in and look at like all of the game maker files and see what they are and how they work and how they, they use keys and stuff like that. It's really neat. But this is everything that you need to back up, use source control inside of here. So this repository now has this in here. And that's really all you need to do. So when you're working, or when I work, I actually keep this up. And when I make a big change, when I've worked for 10, 20 minutes, I go git add dot git push or git commit, give it a message. And then I say git push. And then it pushes it up and saves it. And then at any time when you need to pull down your project because you've made some changes or whatnot, you would say git pull and it will go out to your external server and it will try to pull any changes down. And if it finds any, it will pull them down and integrate them into your project. But if you have changes that conflict at all, you're going to have what's called a merge conflict. Now, if it's just you working alone, you'll never have a merge conflict because you'll actually never need to pull down unless you go to a new machine. But if you're working with other people or you are working from multiple machines or you have multiple branches, things like that, you're going to have merge conflicts. And if you get a merge conflict, you're going to want to download VS Code and start Googling it. I cover how to solve all of that in my Udemy course, so please do check that out. But this workflow right here will work for exactly what you need. There's a few extra steps. You don't get to do it inside of GameMaker Studio 2, but this is the best way to do it. GameMaker Studio 2 is still very finicky when it comes to using source control inside of it. So I don't personally. It is a hassle. It is a problem. So I use it from here, which gives me total control and the ability to do advanced source control management, such as branches and merging and things like that. So... That's how you use source control. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you run into any errors, send them down in the comments with the full errors and I'll do my best to help you. When you're using source control from the command line, it's very easy to run into problems that will just baffle you for hours. I've been there again and again. But if you have one project and that's all you're doing from your machine, it should work very well. If it doesn't, let me know and I'll do my best to help you. Other than that, that's what I've got for you. So, as always, thank you very much for joining me. Have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later.